James Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well look it's a couple of days after Christmas and um, it's quite warm in Australia here. Um, we're getting to about 32 degrees and um, evenings are about 22 in there somewhere so look it's not too bad. Um, over Christmas day we had my mum and dad and um, my kids and um, Judy's sister and her hubby there and um, we had a bit of a feed, yeah, <laughs> had a bit of a Christmas dinner. And look, over here we didn't do a big cook up, it was all cold meats and, um, you know, turkey and um, mustard honey turkey and plain turkey and chicken and, yeah, all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah, vegetarian, um, parmesan and spinach or some funny thing, but look, it was all very nice, all very good. And so, um, so now, we're sort of heading towards New Year's next weekend, so um, I'm having a little bit of time off work. And I thought I'd get into the shed a little bit, but <laughs> you know how it is. All the lations coming over, so um, first few days it was on the mower, so I've mowed just about the whole place, and um, I'm just about ready for a second run of that. And um, yeah, we we got mangoes out on the tree out here, so we had mum and dad and then come and pick mangoes and things like that. So um, they've been two days now and um, then there was a chook pen to help put up. Um, I'm still doing that. Um, Jude has a bit of a frame left over from a, a cat cage or something. <laughs> anyway, it's going to be an extra chook pen so I've got a lot of honeydew jobs <laughs> and we've got to put a trampoline up for the kids, a, a three metre or ten foot round one with a net on it for the grandkids so that was an afternoon and, and because we had visitors coming all the concrete around the house had to be all pressure cleaned and um, the brick house pressure cleaned and um, tidied up some of the gardens and yeah <laughs> so um, I knocked off work last Friday and um, it's Wednesday now and this is the first day I've had a chance to come up into the shed and um, I've I bought some stainless steel bash plates for under the Triton, under the um, Triton we bought last year. Um, because underneath them they're, well it's an automatic and they've just got a tin automatic pan under them, some, and um, under the automatic transmission. And look, it's just not very strong at all. And um, so yeah, I looked online and I, I got recommended to buy these ones off a, you know, off a forum sort of thing. And, so I've done that, I'll take you for a little walk over there and, and have a look and um, usually Christmas, I take the time between Christmas and New Year to clean up Bundy Bear's shed and uh, it's just that as the year goes on you don't get a lot of time to um, you know, clean up and, and keep the place as you probably should because you, you run in, do a job and bolt out again and get something else happening or you know, someone's on you, can you film with this for me or that, so you, you try and accommodate them when you can but um, I, I usually try over um, over the East, over, sorry, Christmas period to have a big clean up so we're going to do that but I'm also going to try and do a couple of Fergie videos as well um, if we can um, the weather's been beautiful and the, the, I've got the boat sitting outside so we're actually going to try and snip a day's fishing into it if we can um, I'll take the camera along and take the fishing and um, if I ever catch anything big yeah, you, you'll you'll see it all right. <laughs> you'll be sick of it. But um, yeah, so it's it's just a just a normal Christmas break. We've had the grandkids; they're going home today. And um, so yeah, we'll get a bit of bit of work done. Then tomorrow we've arranged to go into our shop and keep demolishing the office. So um, we sell a lot of stuff on eBay and things like that. So um, we've got to go and do 20, 30 packages tomorrow, probably by the look of it. Uh, package that up because we haven't done any since Friday and um, yeah look we'll, we'll get that done and Judy can probably pack that and I'll I'll start dropping a little bit more I'm getting very close to it and another day or two should do it but um, the carpenters or the builders in Australia they have about three weeks break at Christmas so they don't get going until probably look somewhere around Australia day which is January 26 um, they usually have a bit of a break and, and get back then when the kids go back to school so um, I've got a week or two up my sleeve for that, but I'm going to use one of the days off to go in there and do a bit of work just to 
try and sort that out too. So how much will we get done in Bundy Bear Shed? Who knows? We'll, we'll just do what feels comfortable at the time and see how we go. Um, I've, I've already filmed some of the milling of the water pump impeller, the stainless steel impeller. And oh, look, I was dreaming and I let it come out and didn't have my bed tight enough and I broke an end mill. So I'll probably leave that in there. And um, it was a three quarter end mill. Geez, a bit scared shit out of me. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's in the, the, yeah, we've got a bit of footage of the milling. And I probably won't feel much more of that. You can see what I'm getting up to. And I'll probably gnaw away a couple of afternoons if I can and finish it off. And, and I'll just show a photo of it finished when it's done. So, um, because yeah, there is quite a lot of milling in it and um, quite a few hours, so you don't want to see all of that. So, so anyway, see how we go with, with what we get done. Um, the main thing will be a big tidy up around Bundy Bear's shed. I, um, look, it's not too bad, but I just like to do it every year and start the year anew. Um, the builders came the other day to have a look at building a new um, carport for us here, and those of you who may have seen the office getting shifted, well, a couple of stews back. If you have a look at a couple of stews back, we had a crane in to shift the office, office and it's a 20-foot container that we're running out of at the moment. And what we're doing with that is we're bringing it home and it's going to be an extension on Bundy Bear's shed. So we're putting a 6x6, six six, which is a 20 foot square double garage, a double carport. So it's a roof with open sides, no walls. And because that's air conditioned, we're going to slide it in under cover so it doesn't get weathered and you know, we'll have a nice roof over it with air con and everything. And I'm thinking pretty seriously about putting the small lathe and the small milling machine in there and setting up one end of it for doing the Bundy Bear Shed stuff then we'll still have the big shed up the back here and the big lathe and um, this is where we'll work on the tractors and that but um, I've always wanted to get into my little model engines and my little Fairbanks that I've been on for years now and I, I do a little bit but something comes up and I, I always put it on the back burner which um, <laughs> I, it just gets, yeah, it's just how it happens and um, I have a lot of tractor work to do and um, the tractor side of the channel is very popular and um, that's what about keeps it running really the, the tractor the how to's on tractor stuff that, that really kicks in but but look I, I've got to <laughs> I've got to thank everyone for having a bit of a look um, last week we hit 1 million views on Bundy Bear Shed and um, I, I waited a couple of days and I, you know, I thought oh, I'll try and catch it on a million but yeah I didn't <laughs> I, I was at work and I just flicked through to have a look and oh shit I'm past a million now. So um, we got the one million views, it's um, taken a few years and look I think we're on 4,700 or 4,800 subscribers so we haven't got a lot of subscribers but we have one, um, one clip in there on fixing a fuel injection pump and look it's sitting on almost half a million views on its own, that one video it's been it's just blown us away how popular that one's been. So, so we're going to keep rattling a few out, and <laughs> we've got plenty of tractor jobs coming up. Like we've got the Ford 4600, and the, the engine kit came the other day for the TEF, the diesel TE20. So that'll be coming up. But um, but in the meantime, we've got to finish the little Fergie, the the little TED, um, the barn find one that we're working on. Um, well, hopefully, I can get back to that over the next few days, and. Um, get the radiator back in and just get it running again and I'll try and do the tappets then and change the oil and um, do the governor adjustments and try and film all that if we can so it, it just depends how much we get done but yeah it's supposed to be a Christmas holiday but there's not much holiday around here um, it, it's the time you catch up around the house and do a bit of work and tidy up and cut the branches down that you should have cut down and all that sort of thing so so look, stay tuned but there should be a bit of milling machine action coming up after I shut up <laughs> and the um, I'll take you for a bit of a walk over to the Triton and just show you for a bit under there so anyway happy new year everyone um, try and behave yourself <laughs> well you don't have to there's no fun really is it? so um, kick your heels up all you like uh, you've got New Year's Day as a public holiday in Australia and that's that's to give you a day to get over your mischief on New Year's Eve so so they give you a day just to, to come good and then it's work on the Tuesday, yeah, so, um, <laughs> anyway, we'll catch you later, eh?
Right, this is underneath my Triton. I've got it on the hoist and I've just finished the underbody bash plates. And they go right back. So they're three millimeter stainless steel. And they've got drain holes in them and all that so the so the rubbish doesn't get in. And you can see just up in here. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's just a tin pan under the automatic transmission. And so that's um that leaves itself open for damage. So so there you go. The sump plates are done. Well we've got the the job over in the on the rotary table. Actually I might be able to zoom out a bit so you can see the table. And it's on the rotary table here. And I have a four jaw chuck on my rotary table so I can centralise anything in it and I can dial it through. Now once you've done that and you've got the unit central, well of course you have to work out where the centre over your hole and where the centre of your piece is. So I've done that with this little, little indicator here and About as good as I can get it on this little jigger is 0.01 of a millimetre. So that's about half a thou maybe. And look, for a water pump impeller that's fine. It's not going to focus on it real well. But um, when I actually start it, you can just see a bit of a jiggle. And that that moves, look it's just a little bit more than 0.1 of a millimetre so that's going to do for us and we've actually we've zeroed it on the bore of the where the centre shaft will go, the impeller shaft, so it's on the centre of the impeller so what we're up this side for is the old impeller had seven holes in it so we've got to work out where our holes are, now we know where our centre is we've got to work out where our holes are and go from there. So I'll get rid of all this and we'll get set up. Right, so for this particular job we're going to work in inches because the old job was inches. So we have metric with three after the decimal, imperial with four. So okay, we're going to choose the pitch circle diameter function. We know our centres there, we've just done that. So we go down from our centre and that asks for our diameter. So we need 2.750. Enter as our diameter. Number of holes is 7. The first angle, now, the first angle if you divide 360 degrees, which is a full circle by 7. It says 51.4285, which is right, I think, because 6 into 36 is 60 degrees. So to fit another one in, we'd have to drop back there. So, so our first hole would be 51.42. Our finishing hole would be at 360 degrees. That's the rest of the circle. And so there we go. If we... We zero the hole out here. We'll zero that one. And we'll zero the other one. too far, I have to come back. And that should be our first hole. So that's the process, when we go to the second hole it'll give us more coordinates to work towards. Alright, let's put something in the chuck and just do a test run and see if we're all okay.
Right, we've marked it all up. Now we're gonna speed this little drill up a little bit. There's our first hole. Now I'm going to do, I'm just going to go and the light centre punch each hole and then we'll go from there. I've got a young fella's dog in the corner, doesn't like being on the chain, but anyway, he'll have to get used to it. Okay, so hole two. We run across to. But yeah. Okay, we're just about there, two thou off, two tenths off I should have said. Now we'll bring this fella out. Okay, and that's all we're doing. We're moving both axes to get the seven bolt holes. So I'll run around and pop these because it's a bit boring watching and I'll come back. Well, there you go. There's our seven holes, nice and evenly spaced. And little DRO did a good job. And so now we'll get a bigger drill and we'll go right through where they are there now. And um, yeah, I may even drop them through with an inman. I'll, I'll just have a look and see which way we go with that. But yeah, it looks to be working well. Well, there you go. I've, um, I've done a pilot hole all the way through. I think it's 1964 drill. You know why we use that size drill? Very important. I went and had a look at the drill thing and that looked to be the sharpest one in the, in the caddy. <laughs> Alright, I'll go and get the um, end mill now. Um, the end mills I had weren't centre cutting so by putting a cut in them we should be able to get a nice rigid run straight down the middle and have it clear and um, have a nice hole come out so we'll go and get set up for that right we've put a bit more light around here with our um, with our LED lights now this is a 12 millimeter end mill four flute end mill made of the best Chinese money can buy so <laughs> we'll just see how that goes dropping down through this 316 stainless.
I can't get some pointy nose pliers, but look, it does seem to be cutting well. A little bit of heat, but not too bad at all. going through the bottom. Just beautiful. Okay, I'll do that six more times and come back. And there we go, there's the 12 millimeter holes that we put through with the um, Chinese end mill. They made it through the stainless, no worries. Still seems to have an edge there. It's quite sharp on the corner still. So yeah, I think it's a good thing. Okay, now we have to repeat the whole process. I'm getting sick of going round and round. Um, repeat the whole process with three quarter holes and then we can flip him upside down and start milling across and making the veins. Right we're going to go down again three quarter. Look I had the other end mill, the three quarter end mill and it was blunt. You could have sat on it and not done that any damage and the only other reasonable one I have was this roughing one so look it's an impeller it'll be all right. We'll give it a run and see eh? Side of the hole's a bit rough because it's a, a um, roughing end mill, but it's all we got, so we'll have to use it. Well, that's one done. So 
Certainly not the neatest hole I've ever done in my life. <laughs> not to worry. Alright, we'll continue on. I'll do a bit more of this and come back when we're done. Well, there we go, that's all the holes done. Now, coming in from the back here, we have to chomp a heap of it out. So, where the holes are there, we go straight through and yeah, we end up with some small veins. Something like that's the go. And my holes even line up. Bloody miracle. We're still sitting at the nice height, so we're... Yep, coming along. Alright, we'll get all this set up. 